Hello everybody, Nadim here for Online Tennis Instruction. I would like to discuss a very important topic and concept today having to do with proper spacing to the contact point and how that impacts your swing path. Now it's very important to note that this um, drill and exercise today has to do with balls that are coming very close to you at the baseline. So I'm not going to talk about balls that you have to run a great distance to, but it's a regular fed ball or a heavy ball, anything that is coming within a close distance to where you already positioned on the court. So let's take a look at the setup I have here. The lines and the cones are supposed to illustrate the conundrum I find a lot of players uh, being in. So for illustration purposes let's say you are positioned where this yellow um, cone is and what happens when players struggle with the correct distance to the ball and the negative impact it has on the swing path one of two things mainly happen. Now first of all they don't move at all. Players don't move at all let that ball come in and adversely what happens is as they swing to the ball the timing is off. There is no not enough time to execute the proper swing so they find themselves a lot with a lot of coaches um, you might have heard already say you're hitting the ball too late or too close to the body what they actually mean in that um, case is your elbow at contact is very close to your upper body almost like jabbing it because there's just not not enough room to do anything else and consequently what happens is your swing path will go across and you won't be able to have the proper swing path which is inside out I'll go into that a little bit further detail in a minute the other thing that say somebody does happen to move most of the movement done however is not proper either so take a look at these blue cones I've set up when somebody does move most of the time it's one step to the side either way whether it's a forehand or a backhand so that there's a little bit more space to swing at the ball however because again I'm not distanced properly the ball is bouncing way too close to where I'm positioned my swing path now although I have a little bit more room will go way over to the right side on a backhand and way over to the left Left side as well to where if you're looking from the angle that you're looking at me right now right after contact the hitting arm elbow will disappear causing another bad swing path what we call the outside in swing path so the distance will definitely uh, impact your swing path and as you want to what I want sorry what I want you to um, get from this is that we always want to have an inside out swing path to contact which we can't really get unless we distance properly so let's take a look at this a little bit more in detail what exactly is the inside out swing path I just mentioned. What is very important to note, let's still take away the distance and just explain the inside out swing path. What I briefly note, uh, mentioned before is that outside in swing path which makes the elbow disappear right after contact so you no longer can see my elbow. Okay. The inside out swing path is a path where you do start close to the body as you begin moving to contact but then as you swing to contact you're going out. So you're coming from the inside close to the body to out outside of the body so you can only do that you can only maintain this proper swing path inside out swing path where the elbow is still visible right after contact from your view it is very important to have the proper distance to the ball and that distance is outlined with these yellow lines what I want to be sure you understand is that when somebody spaces themselves to the contact point when receiving a ball that is very close to where they are originating from it's not just about moving laterally or backwards but it's a combination you need to space backwards and then move over to create the proper space in order to get that inside out swing path let me quickly show you what I mean and I'm gonna do a drill right after this so let's say I'm starting right here on the baseline where that yellow cone is so I notice the ball is coming close I want to hit a forehand so I would go back around Okay, I'm distancing myself not just laterally where the blue lines are and not just straight back but actually back and around so that I can then step into the ball and maintain that inside out swing path. I cannot create that swing path if I just move one way or the other. I have to move both ways. I hope that's clear and to even emphasize it further I would like for show, to show you this in an exercise. Okay, now I'm going to show you how this looks like and an exercise you can do on your own in order to work on the proper spacing and maintaining th the correct swing path. So what Greg is going to do for me is going to feed the ball right at me from the center and then take a step away so I don't hit him. The idea is for me to space myself properly to the ball as he drop feeds it very close to where I'm standing. And for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to be standing very close to this line here 
with a, a yellow uh, cone is. So we're gonna first demonstrate the forehand and then the backhand. So let's do a couple, let's say two or three for the forehand, Greg. Here we go. So I'm gonna start, he's gonna feed right at me. I'm gonna distance myself and then step back in. So you see how I moved back and the last step went back to the ball. Let's do that one more time. So I distance myself and then I can step back in without throwing the racket around, twisting over, and you will, you will still see my elbow at the end. Let me do this one more time so you can actually see where my elbow finishes and see that I truly swing inside out. So one more time, split turn, and then I come out and I still have the elbow on the side here. I did not rotate around. And this is a good checkpoint for you to have when you work on this. So let's take a look at the backhand. I'm gonna demonstrate the one-hander. Same idea here. I space myself away and then I can swing on balance one more time. You can see that I'm going not just sideways and not just over, but I'm doing both. I'm going a little bit in a curved position from where I'm starting so that I can create that inside out shot one more time. Here we go, split turn, and then I can step in. I hope this makes sense. I highly encourage you try that with this exercise and also let's say you don't have a partner with self feeds and that's what I'm gonna show you next. Let me quickly show you how to do this by yourself if you don't have a partner. I'm going to move this yellow cone here real quick because that's exactly where I'm going to be um, drop feeding myself the ball. So same idea again, I'm going to demonstrate only the forehand now, but same thing, let's say the ball comes really close, I got to space myself properly to then step back in and maintain balance so I don't have the incorrect swing path. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to hand feed that right to me and then I can step in and space myself one more time right in front of me and then hit that ball again right in front of me space away maintain that inside out swing path it's only possible to do that if you move back and over in order to maintain the inside out swing path keep working on this let me know how you do when you practice this because self-feeding may be a challenge for some but i'm more than happy to get back to you with any comments so good luck and until next time Nadim is now available for private lessons in sunny South Florida year-round. When you work with Nadim, you get state-of-the-art instruction with instant video feedback right on the court. If you want to take your game to the next level with private lessons, simply click the link inside this video for all the details.